This time yesterday, we were covering the debate in the House of Commons into the Partygate report. It was driving me mad, I don't know about you, but MPs overwhelmingly endorsed a report that found Boris Johnson lied to Parliament. He will now be denied special access to Parliament, usually granted to former MPs, let alone a former Prime Minister. But I am asking today, was this a good use of House of Commons time? Or have they got more important things that they should have been talking about? I am joined now by the lecturer in British politics at the University of Liverpool. It's Dr. David Jeffrey. Dr. David, thank you very, very much. I thought yesterday was an advert for knocking Parliament down, sacking everyone in it and starting again, because we have a cost of living crisis, mortgage rates looming large, an NHS crisis, a small boats crisis, a crisis everywhere you look. And our MPs were more energised about giving Boris Johnson a kicking than I've seen them about anything. Yeah, look, I can understand why people would feel like that, but this is an important, it was an important vote rather about whether people who mislead the House of Commons should be allowed to get away with it scot-free. And if Boris Johnson really was as secure as he thought he was in his position, he wouldn't have resigned. So I think you're right. There's a lot of time and a lot of column inches that have been spent on this issue. And now the issue has been put to bed. MPs should be focusing on the more important issues, but... This is the thing, is it? Because we're going to have, an, we're really gonna have an inquiry into the inquiry. And this is the problem. We're, we're now going to end up having an inquiry into the people who dare to criticise the inquiry. Um, I, I am also joined, I believe, a bit of a, a, a late show, but we'll go to him as well. I'll come back to you, David, there. Uh, barrister and writer Stephen Barrett, lecturer in British politics... Uh, sorry, barrister and uh, writer Stephen Barrett, I should say. Yes, there we go. Uh, look, I, I was saying before, I thought this was a terrible advert for... British politics yesterday. There are so many more important things on. Can, can you explain to me why the British public should feel enriched and have their lives changed for the better by what they saw yesterday? Well, no, because I'm warning people that a very dangerous precedent has been set because they've lowered the test for what it is to mislead Parliament. They've um, allowed all sorts of uh, treatments of, of their evidence which will make it easier to convict people in the future. So if they want to now, they can run around accusing each other of, of, of this heinous crime that they've just invented, and they can, they can rip absolute shreds out of each other to, to, to the point where I don't think ministers are going to be able to answer questions at the dispatch box safely. And, you know, they, they've been warned time and time again, that you don't mess with the rule of law, but they weaponized what it is to lie. They lowered the definition of what it is to lie. They raised the punishments to an astonishing height. And they are, as you now say, running okay. around trying to get everybody who criticized them. Yeah, Dr. David, it sets a precedent. So if an MP now misleads Parliament, knowingly or not, and intention may be inferred rather than proven, then they can be summar summarily ejected and quite possibly have their past taken off them for life. I put it to you that that is actually quite a bad thing for democracy. Well, the thing about the House of Commons is that it's quite a unique institution in that it can set its own rules. So if MPs do think this is too egregious and if they think it's gone too far, then they can set the threshold of what a committee uh, can can take as a standard for ejecting somebody. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, Boris Johnson losing his parliamentary pass is not a big hot topic issue for our democracy, right? We know that he basically misled parliaments. We know that he knew things were going on that shouldn't have been going on. And instead of deciding to stand up for his position and fighting the by-election, he decided to resign. All of these things are, are fairly uh, happened over the last few weeks. And there's a lot of Tories, like myself, right, who like Boris and who voted for him in 2019 mm. and who supports him in the general election, who feel bitterly disappointed with the way that he's mm. carried on. And well, this is him okay. getting, for once, his just desserts. I, I, I understand that point of view. Stephen, I, I will put it to you that this has been going on for a very long time. If Boris Johnson was that way inclined... What he could have done was say, I am being hounded to within an inch of my life and my mental health is in the toilet. Please, can you stop it? And everyone would have had to have respected that because I have never seen anybody be bullied in the press to the extent that Boris Johnson has over the past year and a half. It is absolutely obscene. If anyone, it makes what happened to Philip Schofield look like child's play, what's been going on with Boris Johnson, right? And I, I just can't help but feel like the young single mum in a council house who's been waiting six months for a hernia operation will have been looking at what was happening in Parliament yesterday 
and thinking if you had even the tiniest bit of energy to help me out, you would not have spent a whole day congratulating each other, hiding your own personal scandals in the closet somewhere, saying, oh, look, gee, we finally got, we got the, the nasty Trump light out of Parliament, Stephen. Well, I mean, the, the history of show trials is that uh, they start off quite reasonable. Some people will point out that they shouldn't be happening. I like to think like me. And then other people will say, oh, this can only happen once. Don't worry. It's this individual. So you've really got to focus on the next one. And that's why I've constantly been trying to take the focus off the MP in question. And I'm actually just not even going to bother naming the MP in question anymore because it's not relevant to me. But yesterday in the House, I won't name him, but another MP asked the Speaker if members of the public were, were widespread committing this, this new crime they've just invented of, of contempt of Parliament. Uh, are they going to try and take this outside of the House of Commons? I mean, David's quite right. If it stays inside the House of Commons, well, then a, a plague on all their houses. If they want to be lawless, they can be. That's a matter of our constitution. But it's, are they going to try and take it out of the House of Commons? Are they going to try and target the House of Lords? Are they going to try and target members of the public? How, how silly are we going to get before people realise that this is a process error and it's not about a specific MP. Oh, look, both of you, thank you very, very much. It's a bit short and sweet, that, but I think we've got all the key points over. And I really appreciate both your times and to have a range of views. There's uh, barrister and writer Stephen Barra and lecturer in British politics at the University of Liverpool, Dr David Jeffrey. Yep, my overarching point is quite clearly this. Your emails are flooding in. Uh, I'll go to those very, very shortly. GBviews at gbnews.com. Just one quick one. Yesterday was a total disgrace. The world must think we're all nutcases if this is the way that we are carrying on. Old scores being settled, and that's from Leslie. What we saw in Parliament yesterday was the culmination of a massive anti-Boris Johnson campaign, and I can understand that many people think that he deserved everything he got. Yeah, fine, but what did the taxpayer get out of it? What did we gain as a country yesterday? What did the people who were waiting for NHS appointments gain? What did the people who can't get a school place? What are the people who can't get a house? What are the people who are being booted out of their house? What about people who are having to live next door to an asylum seeker hotel? No one. No one got anything, apart from Harriet Harman and maybe Theresa May. GB Views at GBNews.com. A reminder that